Today, I want to take a closer look at two semiconductor giants, one of my favorite semiconductor companies, NVIDIA, and one of your favorite semiconductor companies, Intel. So what I want to take a closer look at is just some recent updates on some of these US restrictions on AI chips. Um, we are hearing some talks happening this week and obviously something to keep an eye out, especially for semiconductor investors. And second, how Intel might be trying to get into this Chinese market, especially with AI chips, thanks to the export controls that we are seeing here in the United States. So let's take a closer look in today's episode. So real quick, very nice day for semiconductor companies. It does seem like very nice day for the overall market, but we can we can see Intel is up roughly 3.6%. NVIDIA is not that far behind, up, up almost 2.1% uh, as I am recording. And this is after the market closed. And we can see AMD closed at almost 2% up on the day. Uh, so overall, great news for semiconductor companies. It does seem great news for the overall tech market in general. So one of the main things happening is today we hard report that chip companies like NVIDIA, Qualcomm are meeting with top U.S. officials to kind of discuss a little bit more on these Chinese policies that are happening right now. Um, and for those that are not familiar, earlier, late last year, around August, uh, or late August and early September, we did see that the United States, due to some form of national security, started to create restrictions that certain companies couldn't send AI chips to China. They had to meet some certain threshold. And if the chips were too advanced and were meant for AI workloads, then you most likely were not able to send them to China. Um, one of the companies that was heavily impacted by this was NVIDIA. For example, their A100 and their H100 GPUs were not, are, are, are not being able, are, you cannot export them to China due to national security. So in kind of, of a comeback to that, NVIDIA decided to make some new chips or Chinese vi variants, right? They created the A800, which is a weaker down version of the A100, and the H800, which was a weaker down version of the H100, and was able to kind of bypass a lot of these export restrictions, which was good, right? Hey, th we were uh, these companies were sending AI chips to China, but they weren't the strongest of them all. Well, recent recently we started to hear earlier in July that these Chinese bans might get even stricter, and that it might even include the H800 and the A800. So it does seem like U.S. companies are kind of worried that, hey, this might continue to hurt maybe the business in the long term of things. So we are hearing reports, like I mentioned, that today some chip companies are meeting with top U.S. officials to kind of discuss some of these Chinese policy exports. Um, I, I, I honestly believe we're not going to see much change here. Um, I do believe uh, this kind of restriction is somewhat needed, unfortunately. And I do believe we're going to continue to see this. I don't see this kind of Lobbying, lobbying happening right now is going to make any changes, but obviously um, politics is a whole different different discussion, um, not something we kind of cover in this channel. So I, I, I might be surprised, right? Who knows? Maybe we might start to see less restrictions later on. But outside of that, if you might have been following this channel, we started to see that earlier in July as well. Um, there were talks that the U.S. could also restrict Chinese companies from using cloud providers like Amazon, like Microsoft, and like Google. Because even though some of these U.S. Uh, Chinese companies are not able to purchase the H100 or the A100, they would still be able to kind of use it in a loophole by kind of using clouding companies like Microsoft, Azure, or Amazon's AWS, where you will be kind of just renting out a lot of these computational power. And in that computational power renting, you would probably get the H100 and the A100. So it does seem like the United States is is wants to kind of go through that loophole. We haven't heard too much about this. I do believe maybe we might start to hear a little bit more later this month or in early August. But overall, so that's really what's happening in the market right now. We are starting to see these restrictions of U.S. chips in China, especially those that are focused in the AI market. We started to also hear reports of NVIDIA that they are prioritizing the H800 production for Chinese AI market opposed to the A800. So like I mentioned earlier, right, NVIDIA created two different chips. They created the H800, which is their most advanced and a weaker down version of the H100, and then the A800, which is a weaker down version of the A100, which was the previous generation. 
It does seem like there are reports that NVIDIA just wants to say, hey, screw the A800, we're just going to sell the H800 to China. And it does seem like the main reason is NVIDIA just wants to make more money, right? The H800 is roughly selling for 35000 per chip in China, where the A800 was only selling at $14,000 per chip. So overall, better margins probably for NVIDIA and also better, um, better revenue on their top end. The other thing that I do believe could be happening is NVIDIA might be just working with some kind of manufacturing partner, obviously TSMC, and it might be cheaper for them to say, hey, look, I know we have the H800 and we have the A800. What if we just do a bigger volumes of the H800 and no volume of the A800? Maybe margins can even improve a little bit better for that higher margin pro product. So I think that's great news. I mean, I, I do believe NVIDIA is going to be making a nice amount of money and it's really taking advantage of unfortunately, of this demand of their AI chips. Um, obviously, I do think we are going to have to keep in mind of how U.S. restrictions kind of continue to grow from here. If you are a semiconductor investor, one risk right now, at least for NVIDIA, is that, hey, look, H the even the A800 and the H800 get restricted from China. But at the same time, at the moment, it does seem like NVIDIA has enough demand from the rest of the world that even maybe for the next few quarters, if they do see a slowdown in China, that demand can be picked up by easily by any other part in the world, in the United States, in Europe, and so on and so forth. So in the short term, something like this might only be a small bleep for um, for NVIDIA, maybe some of these semiconductor companies that have are seeing this kind of demand. In the long term of things, though, I do believe that's where a lot of this can really create some form of impact. Um, before we go any further, guys, though, if you are enjoying the episode, make sure to hit the thumbs up. Make sure to hit the subscribe button. I'm trying to hit 30,000 subs by the end of the year, so I really do appreciate the help. If you want to learn more about the semiconductor companies, my bread and butter through education and through my career-wise, uh, I do have a membership program where I do weekly videos. Make sure to check that out as well. And finally, I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. And check out fool.com slash Jose for the 10 best stocks to buy now. With that link, you get a promotional offer for the subscription service. Now, let's continue with today's episode. All right. So now that we know what NVIDIA is doing, there are reports that Intel is actually bringing the Gaudi 2 accelerator to China to, China to fill gap created by NVIDIA export limitations. So like I mentioned, right now, thanks to this export restrictions there there is kind of this gap that is being made in the in the chinese market right not only just because hey they're not able to send their full trip but also because nvidia has such a huge demand right now they're not able to kind of keep up there's not enough supply for demand so intel does have a few ai chips one that i have talked about in this channel i do believe i did a video on it i'll probably post it on the description where i talk a little bit more about the gaudi 2 the gaudi 2 for those that are not familiar is an accelerator Accelerator that Nvidia uh, that Intel developed thanks to the their acquisition of a company called Habana. Habana was the one who kind of generated the first generation. The second generation recently re was released last year, and this is an accelerator called an HPU. And the Habana Gaudi 2 seems to be doing really well for certain AI workloads, like kind of test, um, like training large language models. Um, there, the Gaudi 2 is one of the only two semiconductor solutions to submit performance results to the benchmark of large language model training of GPT-3. The only other semiconductor solution was the NVIDIA product. It does seem like the Gaudi 2 is an extremely compelling price performance alternative to NVIDIA's H100, and in forms of performance, it's a little bit better than the, 8, the, the A100. So it does seem like Intel is trying to bring the, um, the Gaudi 2 to kind of, hey, say, like, look, you guys have the eight eight hundred right here why instead of going with nvidia and this kind of huge lead times come talk to us we have a nice amount of accelerators that can definitely help with certain certain ai accelerating workload so it's pretty interesting intel is definitely uh i, I want to say an it seems like Intel is an underdog in this AI race. Um, they also have their fourth generation Intel Xeon scalable processor, which is their server CPU, which is doing amazing AI training workloads as well. Um, Unfortunately, unfortunately, there are reports today from, from DigiTimes that says that Intel's Gaudi 2 is not compelling enough for Chinese AI companies at the moment. One of the biggest issues that is happening right now is with accelerators, at least for AI workloads, it does seem like there is this kind of barrier. Um, and one of that barriers is 
NVIDIA has created kind of this close source solutions for a lot of AI software and for companies to kind of shift out of NVIDIA's GPUs and go to maybe another company's accelerator, they have to change a lot of code and that might take a long time. So certain companies don't want to go through that hassle. Uh, so it does seem like at the moment, Intel's, uh, that's kind of preventing maybe some Chinese companies to go into Intel's Gaudi 2. Uh, I do believe that might start to change as we start to see maybe more pressure on NVIDIA's uh, supply as well, that people are going to start looking for a second player. Uh, especially like here in the United States, it does seem, we have heard rumors that the H100 has roughly a lead time of 42 weeks. Um, and we can see from this report here, Industry Insider that says the H100 GPUs are between 6 to 12 months lead times. Uh, so pretty interesting if probably you haven't placed your order on the H100, you're not going to get any this year. Uh, you're probably slated for later next year um, if you're lucky, right? So pretty interesting news. I just want to say for, for semiconductor investors, it's very important to kind of see where these export restrictions are going to be coming and going uh, and how they're going to kind of evolve from here. I personally do believe we are going to continue to see heavy restrictions to China, at least for the AI chips and for AI software. Um, I don't see this slowing down but obviously things can change from here obviously if also if you are an investor of nvidia or any semiconductor company that focuses on advanced chips you have to understand hey maybe some of these um, restrictions are going to cause maybe a slowdown in revenue, maybe not now as the demand is still high, but in the future, uh, this kind of slowdown in Chinese market or this restriction in Chinese market can definitely create some form of hurdle in forms of revenue growth. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Take care, have a good day, and see you next time.